Of the five Admiral Hipper class heavy cruisers laid down, three would be completed as cruisers, Admiral Hipper, Blucher and Prince Eugen. The fourth, Seidlitz, had a somewhat different story. Laid down at the end of 1936 and launched at the start of 1939, she was shaping up to be a considerably heavier ship than her predecessors. Hipper had come in at just over 16,000 tonnes, Prince Eugen was a fraction under 17,000, but Seidlitz was scheduled to be 17,600 tonnes standard and almost 20,000 tonnes fully loaded. She was also 25 foot longer than Hipper had been on launch, as well as being a couple of foot wider at maximum beam. She had initially been ordered as a light cruiser, with four triple 5.9 inch turrets instead of the four twin 8 inch of the preceding ships, but a series of political changes both east and west of Germany had resulted in the ship being reordered with twin 8 inch turrets in 1938. However, the ship was still fitting out by the end of the year, although this was nearly complete, the outbreak of World War II had seen priority shift to smaller warships and U-boats, and so these last bits of work were suspended. Even the loss of Blücher did not prompt a restart, but in May 1941 the loss of Bismarck hammered home, amongst other things, the importance of aircraft, which had of course crippled the ship enough for it to be caught by King George V and Rodney. And this was then followed in early 1942 by Tirpitz almost suffering the same fate whilst trying to attack an Arctic convoy. If the aircraft of HMS Victorious had landed a solid hit, Tirpitz would have been left to the tender mercies of HMS King George V, Duke of York and Renown. This finally got things moving. Work on the carrier Graf Zeppelin was restarted, and a number of other ships were considered for rapid conversion into other carriers. A number of passenger liners were considered as too slow or having other detrimental effects, and so Seidlitz, along with an incomplete French cruiser, were chosen for conversion instead. Although almost complete, by the end of August 1942, Seidlitz had had her superfiring turrets removed and most of the superstructure had been cut off. At some point along this line, she was also renamed to Versa, and her new specifications called for the installation of a flight deck 646 feet long and between 75 and 98 foot in width, depending on where you happen to be along it. A hangar 486 feet by 59 feet would carry an air group of around 20 aircraft, with two catapults installed to assist in launching them. Speed would remain unchanged at 32 knots, courtesy of 132,000 shaft horsepower, but she would carry a relatively heavy anti-aircraft battery, consisting of either, depending on which source you believe, 20 105mm guns in 10 twin mounts, and a similar number of 37mm guns in twin mountings, and 96 20mm guns in 24 quadruple mounts. Or half that number of 105 and 37 mm guns, i.e. 10 each in five twin mounts, and one quarter that many 20 mm guns, i.e. 24 all in quad mounts. Essentially, some sources use 10, 10 and 24 respectively as the number of guns, whilst other sources seem to use those numbers as the number of mounts albeit the sketch plans that have subsequently been drawn up based on original documents seem to indicate that the smaller numbers are likely the more accurate ones. Whilst either way this was actually a fairly decent anti-aircraft battery for a converted carrier, the air group seems fairly pedestrian compared to the considerably smaller and lighter Independence class, which were built around about the same time, and which were only a knot slower, but managed to accommodate air groups about 70% larger. But as quickly as work began, it also slowed, and soon she'd been reduced to her upper deck level, but no new work had actually been built atop this to turn her into a carrier. As the Allied air offensive intensified, she was eventually moved east to Königsberg to get her out of the way of the British and American bombers, but this put her square in the path of the Red Army, which captured the city in early 1945, the ship being scuttled in the harbour to prevent her capture. Funnily enough, the Soviets, of all people, had the fifth Hipper class, Lutzow, somewhat worse for wear thanks to the attentions of the German army and the Luftwaffe, 
as they'd purchased her in an incomplete state back when the USSR and Germany were still allied. Although all the useful stuff above the upper deck was gone on Seydlitz, Lutzau, which by this point had been renamed twice and was currently going by Tallinn, needed a lot of machinery and other equipment repaired or replaced to become operational again, and the Seydlitz dash Versa, sunk in shallow water, was briefly considered as a source of potential spare parts. But in the end, this didn't go ahead, and the Hulk would be fished out of the water and scrapped in the 1950s, more to just get it out of the way than anything else. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.